parks recreation advisory that we're meeting. May we please step to the roll call? Yes. Bill Angel? Here. Scott Coleman? Here. Thomas Davis? Here. Uh, Paige Lewis? Here. Sam Libby? Here. Nicholas Novello? Here. And Hannah Mulroy? Yeah. Here. 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 And Sean McCoy? Here. Great. Thank you. Okay, so before we get to the approval of the agenda, I want to make sure that we take a minute to uh, introduce and, and the new smiling face here, Hannah, going to the board. Um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, do you want to just introduce yourself real quick? I think you may Yeah, to I think I met most everyone on the tour. Um, I'm Hannah Moore. I'm uh, excited to be here today to exercise some of my base practice and rec knowledge. And I think I mentioned this, but I do work for the city. Oh, that's good. So excited to have you on the board. Great. Okay, let's move on to the approval of the, of the agenda. Oh, Jeff's got a comment. Uh, yep. I would like to remove the recreation financial policy. Uh, so there's some things that have come up this afternoon that we as staff need to talk about, and uh, it's best that we don't have that conversation tonight. Okay. Okay. Woo, we're going home early. Don't say that. Seems more than ever. Any other adjustments to the agenda? Is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended? Yep, I'll move to approve the agenda as amended. Awesome. All those in favor? Aye. That's absolutely obviously great. Okay, moving on, let's move into the approval of the last month's minutes. So are there any comments or concerns or adjustments you want to make to last month's minutes? I'll abstain from voting. Okay. Nothing. If not, then is there a motion to approve the last month's minutes? I'll move to approve last month's minutes. Okay. All those in favor? All those will be saying. Okay, great. <laughs> the motion still passes. <clears throat> okay, moving on to uh, public and to be heard. Do we have public and to be heard? Yes. We do. Uh, so, uh, would you please say your name and your address and your opportunity to speak? And then we we'll, you might not have time to do some quick comments, but we might have to do a full dialogue today. But um, we still want to hear from you. Is there a limit? Um, uh, two to three minutes is usually what we have for. I'm not going to set the timer, but. All right, well, I was waiting for one other person. She's on her way, but she's not going to make it. So, um, so we're here. We were here. I was here. Yeah, I was yes. here to talk about the Bright Peak Park plan. Um, I've been a neighbor of the Bright Peak Park for like 21 years since I moved in 20, moved there in 20, 2003. Um, my other friend who's on her way. But, um, she's a, a neighbor who moved into the area specifically because she really enjoyed um, what she saw there, not realizing that there was a, a master plan to turn it into a huge developed uh, main king park. And there are there's a small group of us and some neighbors who have become aware of what's going on now that the removal of the prairie dogs has started, um, who are not thrilled about what the overall plan looks like. And we were wanting to know what the process would be. I mean, it's been, apparently there is not funding to get that park developed for the next phase of development to start for maybe three to five years. By that time, it'll have been 20 years pretty much since the plan was originally passed. Uh, it was a master plan, which to be honest, looks like a cheesy theme park in some ways. And we would just like for there to be some kind of public approval process, something where the residents of Longmont have some say in what happens there, instead of just proceeding with the master plan, which is really out of date at this point, considering what's happened with um, uh, the envir environmental issues all around, including climate change. It just seems like a very um, inappropriate plan in light of the recent state of affairs. <laughs> um, and also, I just don't think at the time that enough attention was paid to how much the natural environment, how much the natural spaces are appreciated by the neighbors and by people who go and walk there. 
Um, it's definitely not going to feel the same once it's a maintained park that's filled with like, artificial turf. So I'm just hoping that there's some some way that there could be some kind of revo or put up to the voters again in some way before that all goes through as planned. Great. Thank you so much for sharing. And just one more time, your name and address is one of the. Oh, I'm sorry. Just yeah, it. it's Anna Rebus, and I live at 4501 Nelson Road. Great. Unit 2306, so I'm like walking this distance. Really right appreciate now. you coming in and, and, and talking to us. We really want to do that kind of thing. Um, we do have time in the agenda later on to go into actually this, the Drive Park. Park. We have a discussion there, but do we have any initial comments you want to provide? I think, probably, if you don't mind, I think we will keep it to the point where I think yes, that Mr. Kirk talked over about that and we can yeah. chat a little bit. Can we just do line. that right now instead of waiting? Well, that would be an adjustment to the agenda. Yeah, it would be, <laughs> but. I move that we change the agenda to move our, uh, move the discussion of Dry Creek Park to the first part of the agenda after public invited to be heard to honor the time of the public that has taken the time for it to be here. Okay. second for that. Uh, all those in favor? Okay, right. awesome. So we're gonna we're gonna move things around as we can talk about this now. Great, thank you, everyone, for doing that. And then we'll see what their friends are coming to play here. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, yeah. so. that, oh, that's so smart. I was thinking like <laughs> Save your kids how far are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's on her way. She's <laughs> taking a bunch of classes. So okay. okay. I rescind that motion. <laughs> oh no. And okay, so this is, is quite a, a okay. this is a we need a parliamentarian for this. Okay. Yeah. So I move that we move it to the second oh, item boy. on the agenda. <laughs> Can we do that? Is there a second? Let me just proceed to yeah. Maybe just okay. you have to first have a vote on the other things. And then you have to do we do good vote. I think we just yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to the next item on the agenda, which is as amended, is the the drive through park new business. Uh, the next one. So Stephanie, Stephanie, you're going to kick us off by not watching oh, Law and Order. Okay. But this is. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's what you guys do. Oh my gosh! I wonder. It's not clear how to make this not default to TV shows. And sometimes you can't turn the channel fast enough. It's like, what are the people? Of course, of course. It's my favorite is like school and you're trying to pull up the video and then like all the search things on the side. And they're not my search things. Like, I don't care about the earwax removal, but like, that's the, I know. You know what I mean? And but that's or, or, right. or underwear ads, and you're like, these are middle schoolers. Oh, yeah. Where are you at? There you go. Well, now I'm at St. Justice and Taurus. I spent like that in my first office. There you go. What are you doing here? Um, so there. I teach for Lord about the schools. Outdoor skills and environmental activism. All right, we're going to not be able to do this. So, well, Stephanie's. Kind of setting up here to talk is the, you know the manager of the group that we work in. This that's kind of wanted to maybe set that higher level piece that maybe Jeff and I can talk about a little bit as far as you know what we've been hearing from the public, how old some of these management plans are, and really what staff's ability is to change things are. Um, I do think that this staff is great, as staff Stephanie will go through. That I think we have for a long time taken into uh, consideration. The environment prior to us putting park there and trying to incorporate as much of that into as possible as things have changed. I think that's going to be something we have evolved as a part of we've looked at in the last couple of days, including those, na those natural areas, trying to protect that, trying to add, add more of the, the dry land and less irrigated turf to try to enhance that. Um, the piece that I think for us as staff that we really would need this group to um, you know, start that process with the public is that we have an approved master plan that was adopted by council and it did have the public and it was a, a while ago but that really is kind of where we're at right now like we, we need some other direction from council really to make a significant change and that's where I think maybe stuff you can talk about you know what does it look like to do something that really incorporates some of these I don't want to say newer values but values that maybe become more pronounced in what a park looks like um, at that level of sort of the staff work as opposed to really going back up and opening up the master plan 
Um, and I do think, again, with me being, I'll still say fairly new anchor for the city, I really do think Longmont has done a good job of trying to figure out where the open space fits in, where the greenways fit in, how kids can get on a greenway trail and get to their neighborhood park and their community park and then out to those open space pieces. So at work, kind of where I said, I, I think those pieces all have done a nice job of balancing. However, it has been a long time, and I, I do think the need for parks amongst some of these open space and green spaces is, is important. But how we strike that balance between the park design, I think, is something we can talk about. Jeff, would you? I, I would agree with that. I, I would remind everybody it is a community park, which is one of the only locations that are types of parks that. Uh, allows uh, ball fields. There hasn't been a ball field, uh, baseball field built in Longmont since uh, Sandstone Ranch was built. So that uh, when when community parks are done, it isn't done normally by just the neighborhood. It's a community-wide effort that uh, we would invite uh, athletic groups into to, to those conversations as well. Great. I mean, I just want to clarify because we do have a visitor. Can you clarify just in a sentence what the difference between a neighborhood park and a community park is, please? So a community park is active recreation. We have six currently around the city in different quadrants to serve those portions of the community. Um, we currently have um, Roosevelt, Clark, Fern Maker, Sandstone, and partially Quail. Um, being our central, northeast, northwest, southeast, and south central. So this is our southwest location for this park. Um, a neighborhood park is a park that doesn't have, it has amenities for the neighborhood, it doesn't have a parking lot. A community park would have a parking lot. Um, it wouldn't be as active, it would be more um, practice fields, it wouldn't be programmable space as much as if that were in a community park. I don't know if that helps answer your question. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think. What those sentences. Um, so what I'd like to do is go ahead and walk you all through the master plan just to kind of level set where we are today, where it was in 2008, and um, what we have looking ahead according to this master plan. That's just mm -hmm. it's gonna play. It's gonna cover tomorrow. That would be a future a future um, community park as well as sisters, which is um, just south of the quail which, which cursor is my pointer? Here it is. So currently, you have Silver Creek High School, Orient, everyone. We have Alphonse Middle School and Eagle Creek, Eagle Crest Elementary School. We come down Grandy Meadows, and then um, this is the portion, this is Dry Creek. This is the, the 81 acres that have been identified as Dry Creek Community Park. Phase one initially constructed uh, programmable sports field with natural turf as well as the irrigation pond. Um, and some of these, these efforts were shared with Silver Creek High School, um, as far as the detention. In the master plan, it actually included portions of the Silver Creek um, campus that have already been built out, so those would no longer apply to our future need. Um, the portion in yellow, the multi-use fields, um, and the cricket pitch, those had been installed in phase one. As you know, we're currently working to change the natural turf to synthetic turf as the fields failed due to high soil and soils and a high water table. Um, the fields resulted in, in, in fields that weren't programmable. Um, the, the cricket pitch is, has been very successful and is still um, well utilized whenever the park is under construction. Um, the synthetic turf fields will be west of the whenever those are completed in December. And then south of that is the Future Recreation Center and Pool, which had also been slated for this park site, um, similar to that at Clark Centennial, as well as Quail, where they have um, recreation facilities inside of the community park. So in the future um, state of the park, for the master plan was developed in 2008, it continues along the existing parking and expands it to this midsection here, um, and then a promenade of sorts is created in the midst between the two parking areas. Uh, there's two access points for the park, one being Mountain Drive, one being Grandview Meadows. Um, this was not programmed or master planned to have connectivity between the two in order to eliminate this becoming a thoroughfare from one side of the neighborhood to the other. Um, the, the historical um, 
But that history of this property, whenever it was um, deeded or sold to the city, it happened in multiple phases. Um, it was an old agricultural area with a lot of irrigation features, such as the irrigation ditches, the um, hundred-year floodplain, and whatnot, the dry creek going through. So it was important when this was master planned to maintain that history, that connection to its original use, um, and use the water features in order to kind of make the, the zones of the future park. Um, so that's why you see that you have dry creek and um, I don't really recall the name of this one, but it's coming through. So they're using that within the promenade um, to kind of create play space, community space, gathering space. And it's more of a natural feature than um, something that's created and installed like a large playground or something. Um, it also included two sports fields, which um, I believe are going to be programmable. And then um, another sport, or another, um, so those are the baseball fields and then the sport field which I think is more of a practice field, or mm -hmm. were those programmable as well? It could be programmed. Okay. Then in addition, we had volleyball court down here, a maintenance facility here. This area of town doesn't have a lot of opportunity for some of the equipment needed by our operations staff. So this was an area where they would be able to keep some equipment that they need proximate to this portion of town. Um, and then over here is the sledding hill. So right now the sledding hill is where the rec center would go in theory. Um, that hill would be relocated and re-sculpted to be a nice sledding hill on the northwest side. Um, in addition, um, I think in this area there would also be a restroom building and some areas for picnicking, as is up here, which is a um, picnic grove of sorts. So once again, kind of playing on the water feature, creating little pockets of space for people to gather and have picnics. Um, it would also, as it does now, it has um, a disc golf course. It would be expanded into phase two. Um, and then it would have additional um, soft surface trails in order to improve the connectivity from one neighborhood site to the other, just to kind of help get the kids to and from school. And, um, it also has the dry creek, the dry creek that we're going through, which helps connected to the rest of the city. And then southeast or southwest of the park is the Blue Skies Park, which has some other features with the dog run and skateboarding. Um, and then up to the northwest is the future West Grange Park, um, which isn't currently in our capital. So if there's any questions. Any questions from the board on, on this is the overview of the existing master plan. Can you share a little bit about like the history of like what went into the process of developing the master plan? I know that's you know years. It does uh, before, but you know, Jeff was actually on a part of that um, was there. Yeah. We we did a um, multi night, multi type of process. Most of the meetings were held in Silver Creek High School. Um, had representatives from soccer and baseball, football there, <clears throat> as well as a, a lot of uh, the public. Um, I don't have numbers with me, but they were very well attended for um, the, the type of meetings that we we're having. And I uh, feel like what was represented here, what really did um, take into consideration the, the folks that were at that meeting. Any questions or comments from the board yes page? Hi. Yeah, I mean, thank you so much for um, for sharing this background. And just before, just to clarify, so some of the other, in addition to the ball fields, the other things planned are sand volleyball and racquetball handball. That's an, an, it's one amenity and two. It's a two thing amenity. So that's in the zone right here. Um, so it would be volleyball as well as it would have a racquetball. Now, you know, will it? Those are the details that you have conversation, but that was what was included in the master plan. So partly I asked to put this on the agenda. Well, kind of two reasons. One, um, I actually do wish and hope that they, this could remain a bit more natural because I feel like this part of town, southwest part of town, has really been developed uh, quite a bit. I moved here in 2011 and that whole area has really filled in with housing since I moved here and they're very limited, um, you know, there's parks, so there's very limited sort of natural areas within development that can easily be 
you know, accessed and walked through and enjoyed. And so, you know, I am interested in specifically whether or not there are options to be more, take a more flexible approach to this, to the next phase of this that might incorporate more natural aspects to it. And, you know, I think when you look at the way this area has been developed, it really isn't that conducive to extensive sports programming the way sandstone is. I mean, there's not a lot of parking, there's not a lot of access to very small, narrow roads, neighborhoods really close in. Um, I think it would be pretty challenging in the neighborhoods. I wonder if maybe we could look to somewhere like Montgomery Farm that has not been find out and developed, you know, housing coming in. Um, so I do, you know, I really am interested in understanding at what point the city goes back and, you know, asks the community, does this still really meet your needs given the change of context that's happened? And I think given that this was in 2008, it feels like that would be more into, you know, doing more about public involvement kind of process just to revisit that um, question. So I was just curious, I know the city has chosen to make changes in master plans in the past and wondered if you could tell me, like give some examples of that and sort of what processes what process would be used to do that. Before we go there, I wanted to speak to one thing you had said and that is the proximity. So whenever this assessment had been done and correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I've read, um, it was looked at holistically the city just to see where these are and what spaces already exist that serve that need and what spaces don't. So this was an area that really struggled with an active recreation area. Um, I'm going to go to this next slide really quick, just to. Uh, oh, it's the wrong picture. Um, so Lagerman is 1.6 miles down, and I'm guessing I wasn't involved in the master plan, but that has something to do with this because it is a natural area that has cradles and burning and things like that. Um, and, and, and then AHI is just the north of that mountain, which is a full section. So, you know, by car four minutes walking 35 and biking about nine, unless you're Scott. <laughs> but, um, so, I, I'm guessing that was taken into consideration just given its proximity to where this park is. Um, I know that doesn't answer your question about the master plans changing. Um, fill in the wrong keyboard. So, as far as the master plan, um, I was talking to David, really it's about us to the direction of the council to revisit. <clears throat> Could you not also give direction to council saying we're interested in doing this? Would you support that? Mm -hmm. I don't think yeah. there's anything wrong with that. It's not like organic, they take it at themselves. Mm -hmm. You guys can share that with that ask. So, all right, I'll let maybe Jeff and jump in here. Again, I think for me, as I looked at, you know, staff time, and I was trying to get projects done and working on things and trying to do master plans and opening up new master plan conversations. Um, I would, at the point, I'm an open space person. So I understand this, but I do think I'm trying to think another one besides holistically using it yet one more time on how the recreation component fits in. But that's where I think Jeff and his group really can help balance that too. So I think there's that split here. It'd be hard, I think, for me as staff to say we want to revisit this at this point. I think this board is the right board to do it though. That if that's the group that wants to take something forward, Jeff, do you have any thoughts on that? I have no issue with that. I I guess I would just really make sure that everybody realizes as a community park it's the only park we can do athletics in and if if the community no longer wants that uh, i don't have an issue but but i do want to make sure that uh, that part of our community is represented sisters in the family farm for future right they, they are but as we look at community parks, we try to do those parks throughout the community, and this is really the only opportunity to do this in Southwest uh, Longmont. And, and then the other, the other part I would just say is, um, I would really hope that we would leave this as an as an opportunity for uh, another rec center, where whether it's you know ninety thousand square feet like what went to the voters. Maybe it could be something smaller, but uh, we we do need uh, to represent that part of our community as well. I, I believe as far as ball fields, there are not any ball fields that are publicly accessible in that part of town. Baseball fields. 
And even though there are three baseball fields yeah. directly to the north, they are not public fields. And uh, based on our joint use agreement and work with the baseball leagues, in my 26 years, we've never been able to use use the fields when, when they were built. You mean the ones at Southern Creek? The one about the school. Yeah. It's a good challenge. I realize that like I'm trying to change a whole like system that is entrenched Longmont you know has lots of entrenched systems all, all sorts of cities but Longmont is a leader in changing paradigms and shifting paradigms I um, I struggle with the separation between entities um, sometimes like I struggle like I would like to see more cooperation and I know we can say we can cooperate all we want but St. Brain has to cooperate I, I struggle with the cooperation between BOCO and City of Longmont I struggle with the cooperation between so we have we have big auditoriums but we don't have performance space we have like we have all this stuff these are our resources these are my resources I pay for these resources. These are your resources. I would like to see them opened up. Maybe first come is Silver Creek, right? Because that is Silver Creek. I want to serve those students, and I don't want to take any opportunities. But second coming, off air, second come, off season. So we get more crowded. We have to consider solutions that aren't being used by other places. We can do that, City Council, Sean. We can do that. City Council, our City Council has done great things. And I just think we can start opening these things up. And St. Frank, we can just keep hammering away at conversations. Um, and it might not cure this this time. And I do, like, yeah, like, you know, but it is something that we're going to have to come to terms with sometime. Let's get ahead of the curve. Please. Well, uh, I was on And uh, I, though I don't recall the conversation around this, I mean, the whole concept was is that I was on the minority when we were talking about the density of this, but uh, of these neighborhoods. But this was, at that point, we had spent quite a bit of time going through planning zoning, parks and recreation, uh, uh, all kinds of other uh, uh, boards, transportation, uh, and uh, uh, a couple of others that were probably engaged in the process of decision making. We had uh, uh, these uh, uh, times, like Jeff described, where we uh, tried to draw the community in to give us input on this. And to my understanding, over the years, you've given updates on how things have gone uh, with this. It's not like we, it was one and done. We've gotten updates on on the progress of it, we've gotten updates on uh, the potential uses and changes, and uh, you know, we came to a conclusion that the fields were sinking uh, from the uh, high water table. Uh, so, a new solution has come forward in trying to fix that. Um, you know, I'm 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 not against if the community is truly uh, interested in doing something uh, different. Uh, or scaling this at some point. Um, but this side of town, when you look around, uh, even if we, uh, we can be as uh, uh, come together as we possibly can, but uh, the St. Grand Valley School District has been uh, a, uh, an obstacle in our, in our way when it comes to you know, having this collaborative uh, uh, space is used, you know, when they're offline and uh, outside of, you know, saying, you know, making some sort of bizarre ordinance that would force them to do that, I don't know that that's going to happen. I think the reason why the rec center didn't come through, otherwise it would have been much more, uh, we probably be on a much more aggressive track with this is uh, is the fact that people got hit pretty hard by their tax assessments this past year and it just didn't go and we should have probably known if 
found out uh, through Magellan, the, the group that uh, gives us that information about, you know, when they poll people about um, these sort of things, that we had like 56, 58 uh, percent uh, positivity about this, and the uh, minimum is usually about 60 percent. Uh, but we went forward anyhow just to see where the people were in, by chance. And then the, then the assessment came out, and everybody was like going, no, 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 no. So that was a, 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 a real surprise, I think, to most everybody on the council because they felt the same as I did about putting on a, those, this issue about a rec center on the ballot. Um, now, having said all that, uh, I think there is some ways, you know, I, I looked at that future neighborhood park, uh, maybe some way of making that more. Uh, in its planning, more rustic in its approach, that uh, might be an option. Uh, uh, but I think a lot of what I saw last week when we were traveling around looking at different parts and came into this one, this is kind of in the pretty heavy duty processes uh, right now, especially the, the lime green area there. Um, I don't know how to. Uh, turn that, that train around very easily. I just don't see that uh, very quickly or in any, any sort of manner it's going forward. So I'm, I'm just kind of, uh, you know, I can understand the, the open space needs here. Uh, I mean, but we have open space and we have that. You know, I think we have a uh, uh, concern going on at like the Kanemoto it's a conservation of the like that if we're interested in open space, we shouldn't be considering that for development. Uh, you know, when we're looking at that, and we certainly should scale some of our other developments along this way here. It's getting quite crowded, but um, you know, I don't have all the answers, and I'm just telling you from my perspective what I see and my knowledge of of having been there. So. Uh, I don't know how you turn this around at this point very easily. I'm questioning for other staff. Has there been any kind of um, ecological assessment of the property? No, it's, it's included in the master plan. Uh, in 2008. Mm -hmm. In 2008. Mm -hmm. But, but does, I mean, we talked a lot of, uh, last month and month before about the open space review work we did a look at about the restoration of open space areas. It's a city owned property that's not open space and certainly classifies open space. When I look at the street view and I bike by there, it's you know it's mowed down to nothing. And there is a number one, and it's pretty beat up. Has there been an assessment of the kind of health of this space and what it would look like to improve that? I'd like to put part of the word. So at this point, I think we 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 work in that area and that you know Scott Sievers, Jim Crick, and the um, ecosystem management group are working out there um, for some of the issues along the creek because that creek has drainage issues too. So we're dealing with mosquitoes out there. We're working with the um, cattails and nesting habitat. We're working with the prairie dogs in that area. So we know what's going on pretty much. We understand some of the, the high value of that area. Um, and as we go forward and do any sort of work, we'd also be stepping out and making sure that we're taking that consideration before anything gets started on the ground as well. I guess I'm just saying there's, there's a lot of open space west of here. I would say the access to open space is not very good for the neighborhood. Our 75th is there. There's no crosswalks other than down at Clever Basin. And there's greenways that end in the middle of the sidewalk and are blocked from anything. And um, as an open space area, if you thought of it that way, it would help to give a more objective assessment of the value of keeping it open space versus kind of developing it to a different level of nice dark greenness like this map shows. But if you have a lot more water and a lot of dollars to do that, but it'd be nice to say like this is how well this represents our native ecosystem compared to Lagerman, for example. Which I think it's probably not very well right now. So just we think about this and say, what is the value of this as it is today? We get to assess that against other properties in the area. And I do want to say, water is not being added to this. This is allowing for natural flow to occur. But there's a lot of plants. We'd be adding all those trees with all natural effect. water. Yeah, yeah. Really? I'm just saying, with well, we put trees in our parks, so just yeah, we have we've been raw water because all that irrigation we had just right in the purchase of those lands was dedicated to us. We get those raw water rights, and that's our primary way of maintaining these. For sure, but that's what's not going on this property right now. Right. Everything's irrigated with this. Right. Property already owned. 
Yeah, it's yeah. it's this um, water here is the yeah, water yeah. at the pump station. That's what would irrigate the, the park. Right, but something irrigated now is not flooding out the spring water on it. On the ground spring. It was. It was being irrigated in the just there's a, yeah. in the in the athletic field area. Right. And that's actually not going to be used sometimes because it needs to be yeah. washed from time to time, but not in order to waste. So just want to make sure that Hannah is an opportunity to speak. I saw she indicated just just for a second. I know I'm relatively new here, yeah, but please. um I have been involved in land use planning for well, well over a decade, and there is a science and reason to community parks and why they're located where they are and why they're not open space and why they're within access of certain density of certain kinds of housing. So I just want to say as many people here who feel that it want they want it to remain open space, resident or otherwise, um, I think there's probably at least one other person that wants it to be active recreation for their children, for their dogs, for whatever. Um, I'm an active park recreation person and not an open space person, and it'd be awesome to go there. Um, so I just want to kind of bring a balancing view that there's an awful lot of people in the city that can't come, let their voice be heard, um, and that they may there may be just as many opinions that want this to stay just the way it is. I think. Um, just recognizing that, my question would be, why not, given the age of the master plan, like do some community sensing? To, you know, I mean, I just don't see any harm in that because you haven't moved forward other than removing the prairie dogs with implementation beyond. And I, I mean, I would never suggest we're doing anything with the existing fields. Like they're there, they're being approved. You know, that's what it is. And so I think my question is more, are there ways to revisit this master plan that can incorporate, I mean, you're hearing a lot of community interest around keeping more of the natural area. So are there ways to, you know, revisit the master plan, revisit this area and incorporate more natural values, you know, do sort of a redesign, think about the future neighborhood park, think about sort of the ecological options. So I don't think it has to be one or the other, but I do think it's worth asking the question to see. Like, what are the community values? Because in 2008, there was a lot more open <laughs> access to what we were perceived as, yeah. you know, open lands than there are now. And so I think it's worth revisiting. And, you know, it may be that That's, the majority really want ball fields, but it may not. So at a staff level, I think, again, I'm going to take that piece again. We're managing on behalf of the public. Mm -hmm. And what we what I think that the piece for me is, well, I'm, I'm going to, for Jeff, but you heard Jeff that we already say yes. I think if we feel, you know, but at a staff level, I think we have something that's been approved by council. And to undo that, I really do think I would be looking for some direction from council to say, because is it four years that we keep a master plan? Is it six years? Is it 10 years? I think it gives me, and I hate that word too, a slippery slope, but what is it that we say with, we have good direction from our community and we want to, we want to honor that too. I think when we get to 20 years, there's, there's a piece there that I think common sense says we probably should be, you know, taking a little harder look at it. So I hear, think you hear from the parks and natural resources, we try to build these on behalf of the communities out there, but I also want to make sure that um, I'm following the direction of council and of the, the public that's building these master plans. Sorry, Scott, they didn't get you on this first week, Scott. Oh yeah, no, oh, sorry. I, um, I was just gonna say, for someone last year who went and did 20 events uh, to promote the, the, the rec center, yeah. um, I heard from a ton of people so I'm um, not going to speak to everybody in particular, but the overwhelming majority was, it'd be great to have more fields, to have these ball fields, to have this have an active sledding hill that is over there. There were very few people. There were some, but there were very few people who said, you know, that they want uh, you know, an open space looking environment. But I mean, I literally spoke to hundreds of people. Thanks, that's not counting. Two things that we need to consider. At our council retreat the last two years, uh, the city manager said that we have limited resources of our personnel and uh, that we have to uh, make hard choices about how to use those folks to the most effective way. The second thing is, is then probably Jeff can speak to this the issue of, of uh, uh, the budgeting process, second tier requests. Are where? Uh, they're, they level two, you mean? Huh? The level two. Level two, two excuse me. Level. They've been. <laughs> hey, there were, what we're hearing is that there won't be money to fund them. 
Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. So, so the issue around wanting to, to do an exploratory thing has two, two factors in it. First one is personnel, second one is the money for those personnel. So, uh, you know, we're diving into that now at council. That's part of the next uh, several weeks and months of uh, discussion. And uh, if, if there is a uh, option to, to hear these things out, you know, and look at things more uh, closely, I think uh, there would be probably a person on council that would want to say, oh, maybe we do need to reconsider. But it has to be uh, paired with those two factors that I just said, you know, the, the you know, personnel and their ability to, to take on that responsibility and the money to pay them for that. I think, yeah, yeah please. So uh, the, the only thing I would, I totally agree with what everybody said. I don't, I don't know that it would be a bad idea to, to look at it. One thing I would say is let's don't do it too early until we know when funding comes so that we're not 10 more years down the road. Um, I, I think we, we wait and do it when, when it's appropriate. Um, and then, it's not too late. what? It's just not too late. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we're certainly not going to go up. If we make a commitment as a city to bring people in to get their opinions, we're certainly not going to move forward with with construction documents or anything like that. I think the city has been pretty upfront with the park work that they've done over the years. I think they've uh, we've all done some really good um, park development uh, processes, and there's no reason why. Uh, we couldn't do something that that possibly could be a win-win for everyone. Yeah, I think you did raise your hand earlier. Is that? I, I think. That you I, I think for me, I, I'll leave a bit on that. I think personal and professional piece with that twenty-year gap. I, I I think you know, hearing Scott and Paige say, "Here's what I hear." I do think there's value in us seeing inside the table and hearing what the community says. So I I just want to make sure you know there's there's no pushback in what the board wants to do. Can I ask a clarifying question? Um, we were talking about kind of phase one versus phase two. Phase one is what's already been built and everything else is phase two. When you with the exception of the rest center and pool. So that white out area is what I, so when you go to start doing construction and you're notif do you notify neighbors that you're beginning construction? Is there an opportunity for them? I know you can't go too far from the plan, right? So that's what is substantial fun. compliance. Working on the margins versus Opening up and looking, yeah. Like, look I'm not curious. Can you like, like I don't know what step we Stephanie. This is what we're going with. I don't know how much room Stephanie has to tinker around the margins before we are doing what the community asks. I think that's right. Like, right. I don't think that would be the concern, is like, right. and that's what I mean by not too late is make sure that if you're seeking community input, it's one that is really still an option right. to change course. So it doesn't necessarily mean getting rid of all fields and things, but where you can. Right. You know what I, so, I'm just curious, like, where's the line between okay. opening, I think it's opening so, up a plan and just asking the neighbors for making minor changes? Asking staff to open up that master plan is a good idea. Public engagement. It wouldn't be really good to So anyone needs to be invited um, to solicit their feedback. Thanks. That's Scott. Yeah, so yeah. part of it is, is current city process is that CIP comes up and get the get funded because we know what the budget of a particular project is. It's there, so um, so it's hard to say. Well, we want it to be. We're going to look at revising the plan and then have it tied close. Is that that's why these things go twenty years because they go up against everything else every single year, and it may be close one year, and then it goes down in the pile for the next ten years, and nobody has really any control of it at any given time. So it's. That's really hard to do unless there was a commitment of saying that there's a phase approach, and something think, new and different. Right. And I think the thing that makes those up, up and downs is unpredictable a lot of times. I think there's always best intentions, but if it's a 2008, you know, economic crisis, if it's a pandemic, all those things just seem to just, or a 2013 flood. I mean, yeah. The city has had a lot of stuff that really, again, I think with all the good intentions, was this was supposed to be the next project, and then it just gets bumped out two, three, four, nine, nine, nine or 20 years. So. Mm -hmm. Say it. I'll just say, just to, I think there's enough discussion about questions about this that it seems to me that there's other master plans that have a regular review cycle in them, like a regular transportation plan or open space master plan, regular review cycles. I think we talk about those reviews of them. 
and I'm just confirming there is no regular review of park master plans, right? Unless, there is. So, so is there a schedule for this to get reviewed somewhere? For the parks, recreation, and trails master Yeah, not, so not, part, no, no, not, 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 not part specific, no. Okay. So all I would suggest is I'd be interested in, to keep the symbol of a motion from this board to suggest to council that there's a discussion about this specific master plan as a good example of an older plan that needs to maybe be reviewed. And to your point, any direction from council, if that needs to be out, or council should discuss, are you comfortable with this plan as it is, or is there need to discuss it further? Or not? I'm not sure. And I, can I just make one clarifying yeah. request? Again, yeah. I think if this group wants us to really kind of tinker around the margins, I don't think we have to go to council. If they're really to reopen this up and we need dollars to go back out and do engagement, then that's what I would say. I, I guess to me, it seems like you just put a bunch of money in the turf, the new turf fields. What are the odds of there being money for this to get struck in the next five years? I know you can't say that, but it's not looking good, right? So there's so many things, and like this is this part is getting an investment of recreation specific things that are not benefiting Walker or anybody else. They are reservable. It just seems like a, an opportune time to discuss the prioritization to me, and I think that's the direction we could give if we felt like that is all I'm saying. Thank you, Sam. Actually, I think it's a really good segue into next steps for this topic and how we want to go over it. So, uh, we have a couple of different ways we can go about this. I'm going to open it up if anyone wants to make a motion on, on this topic. Can I do that? Uh, if, if there is no motion, we can also just do more about one formal straw poll. I'd be interested in doing that as well. Just got to check in on how the board feels. I'll pause there. Is there anyone who wants to make a motion on this? I, actually, do we need it's for the if it's just a direction to the staff? It's not really a motion. It's not a formal motion. But, I think motion is more powerful. I don't think a resolution yeah. is necessary, okay. but like, okay, I'm, we can choose. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm still confused. So can I have a little bit of clear? Like I just need it because I'm just I'm just confused about stuff. Sometimes yeah, sometimes things don't get through my head. Um, okay, so right now, just. Like synopsis. Right now, the stuff in highlighter yellow. That's the stuff that we just saw. Those these guys. That's a that's a train that's going. That's going to keep going. But the rest of it might not get funded for a long time. Correct. And we're talking about the rest of the stuff. Because the yet the highlighter yellow train is going to keep going. Okay. So um, we're talking about all the rest of the stuff, and whether we're making a motion just to. Stop things where they are. Stop prairie dog removal. Stop, uh, you know, clearing, clearing cattails. Stop what it. Just leave the environment how it is, until, until, yeah, that's a that's a possibility, or until we've had a, a review by city council and the community. Is that am I getting this right? Do I have this right, or am I? Because you can. I think we can say whatever we want. I think you're. Okay. I think you're interpreting what I'm saying in a different direction. Okay. But I think we can. We can motion whatever we want. Yeah. yeah. I'm just. I'm just a little confused. So I wanted clarification on what we're right. discussing. Yeah, but I don't think we've talked about prairie dogs, or I mean that might be too far down the, the road as well. Okay, I, I think yeah. what we've talked about is does the park need to west of the yellow need to look like it is designed there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Are there are there options? Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's yeah, right. we probably didn't talk. It's just all the any emails I've gotten from people from Dry Creek area, and this it was mentioned by Ms. Rivas too that like prey dogs do come up, and that and that is I know it's a hot button issue. You almost don't want to even mention it um, because it's a hot button issue, but it is for a reason, and so that's that's I was bringing community in with that. I mean, I would obviously be supportive of at least a motion that recommends that before you know any of the phase two goes forward, that there is some kind of community engagement. And I wouldn't call it tinkering around the edges because I just don't think. I think it's a bigger question, and you know, it could go. It could go either way. It's hard to know what. Let's say it could be like we left this, or you know, we'd like to have more natural elements, or whatever. But I just think it's worth asking the question. I don't know when the right time for that is based on this. You know, you're right, you wouldn't want to do it and then not have anything actually happen for five years, and then it's a whole different. But I think the question is like, you know, the prairie dog management is going forward, assuming a certain future. And so I think that's the tricky balance. 
I have one more question from Scott. Right? We'll come yeah, if, um, someone could um, remind me, are we building a new uh, master plan for Clark Centennial for those planes? Or no? Okay. no. Okay. That's not anything that we're, we're waiting for the CIP to be reasonable to be right also. Okay. That's the new direction. We did the renewal coming up for Clark. Yeah, okay. But it's, okay. But a renewal, you know, we can do the master plan. It's so. not a new, it's not tearing it out and doing it over. It's, it's new ones and new remakes. Right. In okay. way. All right. I didn't know if there was a parallel to that. Uh, kind of like what we did at Garden Acres. Yeah. Yeah. Four or five years ago. All right, so I'll pause again. Does anyone want to make a motion on this topic? Sure, I'll try. To, uh, just before I do so, I think the, the discussion with staff is also part of this discussion. I'll take whatever feedback from that. I would say I'll, um, I move that the uh, Parks Rec Advisory Board uh, suggest to staff that some time is invested in revisiting the master plan in light of changes over the past 18 years and discusses it. Recommend a discussion with council about whether it's appropriate to revisit some of that plan during the period of nothing happening here after the after the first bills go in. Okay, that's all I'm suggesting. Just to, that the discussion has value and that we that we are supportive of it as a board. It's an action packed motion. Great. Uh, is there a second? Does that make sense? We can discuss too. After a second, I guess. You can discuss. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we do have a discussion uh, for sure on that. If you'd like. To. Do you, could you guys have eyes on like? To whom should we address our That was, yeah. I think, because it's staff or to the council, kind of right. both in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give me historic I, thoughts. I'm sorry, it was for, for staff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I think if you want to make that motion, you should go to council because you really don't give guidance to us. Yeah. yeah. You're, right. You're advisory to council. Right. Yeah. I thought I'd have to be a resolution to the council. Can we send a motion to them? I guess John Cena. Yeah, I'd say maybe a recommendation. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I think I think a, a, another look at this. And it, you, um, I just quickly checked the match just so we, when we're seeing it, 16 years. So we want to. 16 years. Sure. Gonna put it in there. We might as well get it right. But we can, if you make that motion, we'll get that to the clerk's office and then we get that to city council. So do we need to do that? I think we're able to yeah, just discuss like it if people are in support of it I guess or okay. any adjustments. It seems to me like the, the, the feedback that some of us are sharing. Now, if the council wants to hear it from you guys, I mean, yeah. that, I mean we're not having to have these boards for no reason. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, table that motion, I guess. I'll, so I'll, I'll, I'll retract the motion. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> we need to have Paige second that. Paige, you do second that, thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to, to I think my, my my said it, so I'm trying to. Okay, oh, please, no, go for it. You can, uh, you can it. We, we, um, second that table with that motion. So there's no motion before now. Okay. Paige, okay. you've got really good words. I was trying to write down what's. I'll be right. My other comment was going to be I think there's a very high standard. At the city for what this looks like that we see in all of the parks that are developed. Like I, I love that, that that standard. I just don't know if every park needs to be to that standard. Like we have an idea of a community park that is very I would call this a heavily developed park, I think, right? There's not a lot of open space or active active space. Focus on active recreation, I guess you would say. Like sandstone, right? There's a lot of fields, but they're often consumed by recreation and it's, that's great in many ways. But I think that's the um, that's a big departure from how this space looks right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we certainly had a stall of the juggernaut uh, in a sense uh, when when we thought they would move through with the more advanced uh, elements of this, and uh, I think some of surprised just by darn near everybody in the community. But I think it was a surprise to uh, folks just because. Nobody had gotten their assessments yet. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, you know, that not ready to kick on that. Perfect. Paige? That's all I have to sneak for Okay, I would move that the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board recommend that City Council ask staff to seek public input regarding the future phases of development at Dry Creek Community Park to determine whether the development plan 
still meet community needs given changes that have occurred since the approval of the master plan. That's great. I second that. That's beautiful. I second that. Yeah. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be uh, creating it before we move. Okay. So yeah, that's, it feels more comfortable for us being in that direction than, you know, we're on council. Okay, open this discussion for that. For a discussion, but I would only like, like um, Sam's comment of why can't we just make this bigger and say every time a plan hits like 15 years or something, we do it as an automatic renewal. I just feel like we're going to, this is going to happen in some other form for some other board or some other time. I wonder if we could do that as a substitute. Is that way, that way like to align to motions? Yeah, well, I just don't want it to be a neighborhood issue when it's a community park, too. Like, I don't want it to sound like it's. Um, yeah, I think you want it to be equitable to other neighborhoods as well, is what it sounds to me. Like yeah. that there are other neighborhoods that are going to have the same issue I as think, well. I think if it was like a community level policy or community level, like decision making, that would be better. Yeah. 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 I, I, I agree. It helps. I agree. I would suggest it be a separate motion. I think it's a good one. It's a good, good topic, though. Just that, like I said, like you said, that the idea that some master plans are indefinitely valid until we find funding is going to be a problem at some point. Yeah. So we can do this one first, and then we can communicate them to the council. Because I agree. I prefer to do Okay. Unless you want to amend this one. Okay. So then we can move forward with the vote. So all those in favor of this motion? Raise your hand. Okay. Wow. There you have it. That uh, all those opposed? Nobody, right? That's all that, that passes again. Let's see. Great. Um, okay. Are there any other motions anyone would like to make? <laughs> so on this what topic? Are you, what are you suggesting? I have a suggestion. Yeah. Well, I would just suggest that if we propose it as a future agenda item to look at the status of park specific master plans across the city to understand how big the problem this is. I don't know. Yeah, okay. I don't know how many there are other than this one. I assume there are others. Union, I do. Maybe, it's, maybe it's a discussion topic other than the direction to staff to go do something. I mean, there's a bunch of master plans. There's Union, there's Quail, there's, you know, there's got to be a lot of them. You know, right. Quail. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I like to hear from staff about the process that they already have for that before suggesting any change to that, I guess. It's just a future, um, future discussion point. Can I have a point of clarification? Master yeah. plans only apply to community-sized parks? Neighborhood parks? Or all the levels of parks? Well, they can. They they can. can. <laughs> I, I, I so when you say we want to look at master parks or master plans, how specific are you? For a community? Park, be, park specific master plans. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, that includes open is, space, wildlife, you know, that there are broader topics as well as the specific to parks. So we're just okay. Yeah, I, I would say I feel like we've spent enough, enough amount of time on other master plans in this group, and there are other boards that focus on other master plans of transportation. I'm just simply speaking about interest in park specific master plans that. Are a pretty significant investment of time and money for you guys to build and refresh those. I'm not saying maybe like the refreshments all the time. It's more this scenario seems to me to indicate a challenge in the process of such an investment going into that plan that 16 years later we're talking about a plan that is appears to be the only guidance we have, right? And just that process seemed maybe a little imperfect. But maybe you could I'd like to hear more about it before suggesting some uh, criticism of that. It'd be good to hear what other sectors do. I yeah. mean, like you're suggesting transportation has a regular cycle, for example. I, I believe so. So it might be interesting so, to know. So, so, so what I'm hearing is that we don't necessarily want to make a motion here, but we're, so we suggest that there be a new topic for agenda topic for uh, September or future meeting. Is that right? Yep. Okay. That's what I suggest. Okay. I'm, I'm generally interested in that, like, as yeah, a process, yeah. Yeah, you can both of that, yeah. Okay, I think, yeah, yeah, that's right. I think with that, I'd like to close out this topic then. I think we had a really good discussion on this. And can, can find that. Okay, three. Um, fantastic, so we move things around a little bit. We're gonna move on to old business. 
And this is going to be an update on the open space tactics extension. Jeff is going to lead the way. Hey, yep. Oh, okay. Actually, it's going to be Danielle. She had an after school meeting tonight, so I'm going to kind of wing it tonight. Did the others have that as well? But um, so this group has been very involved with, you know, since um, Stand by Our St. Brandon showed up and kind of talked about the desire to move the open space tax on his uh, on the ballot and for the trees, we can hand the in half, and that was a good opportunity for the open space. Uh, we've gone to council and share some of the information on the open space program, give them updates, talk about ways forward, council then directed us to put it, um, come back with ballot language. That ballot language has now been set and it will go in front of council tomorrow night. So that'll be their chance to look at the, the ballot language and the ordinance for open space. If they approve this going forward, the second reading then will be on the 27th. And then we'll be working with the clerk's office uh, to make sure that information gets to Boulder County to get on the ballots. So there's a bunch of different new pieces with that, but it really is council's got the next two um, regular sessions where we'll be voting on the ballot language and the ordinance. Is it on consent? It's on consent. Staff will be there for any questions, but I think we, we, we have done two presentations to council, so um, we'll be there. Danielle and I will both be there. It's been discussed and, twice, you said? What's that? It's been discussed twice. It's been discussed twice. Right? On the ordinance, I can say. Okay. I, if you're really interested in this, I would say be there because I suspect that it will be pulled off. So, a discussion on. I was curious about that. Pull off the ballot. Pull off the ballot. And that there might be somebody trying to throw modifications okay. into it. Yeah, so uh, if you're there to maybe speak. Citizen, and I think it would be good so that the language does not change uh, from from uh, the two percent. Can you show the language? It's in the packet right now. I'm sure I can pull it up. Yeah, I, I think it might be on. I my vision said that today, but uh, page four. In our packet or the, the council agenda packet? It would be in the council. Yeah, oh, the council. Yeah. council. Yeah. I have it in front of me. It's for tomorrow night. It's for tomorrow night. Oh. And I'll, I'll just say again, um, talking about people there are as public citizens, Daniel and I will both be there because we, we do have to probably get, I mean, sometimes they probably will get pulled and we're just going to be prepared to try to um, address some of the topics that we don't have come up in the past. Um, Sorry to squeeze everything into uh, council com and I, I hoping that we can come prepared to answer the questions from the public and from the public. Great. And you have a question, one question. Um, are there other city level ballot initiatives in our consideration for this year? No. This, this is this school district, I think. Yeah. District is just why, yeah. 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 Any other questions from the board on this topic? Do you, yes. Sean, do you have suggestions of what David and Danielle need to possibly be ready for? Um, just probably looking at the issues around uh, um, changing uh, the percentage is one, and then I think the other possibility is uh, is uh, uh, all right. So I think I said everybody's phones off by sending me the link. Uh, <laughs> so thank you. But I think the other is the discussion around uh, 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 how the money is spent, like you know, on the focus of of uh, uh, just taking care of the acquisition versus you know, maintenance and restoration. Concerned that that might just it's designed to muddy the waters, not necessarily keep it clean and mm -hmm. let people make a decision. So, if I understand right, sorry, I keep needing clarification, but um, that you think that somebody thinks at least that someone on council is going to try to change the language that we have like that we want put in the ballot and that we've studied and things like that 
to possibly lower the tax percentage that from the historic or raise or something the percentage of taxes so it change instead of whatever we already had okay and that they might request a different percentage yeah and, it, uh, I, I don't know that it isn't just designed to add confusion to the voters um that's my my gut feeling <coughs> Uh, to add confusion to the voters because uh, when the school district uh, is moving their their uh, initiative forward, they're saying there's no new taxes, no new things, and that's what we were hoping with this group, from my understanding, mm -hmm. to make it exactly that. And uh, somebody will either try to, my guess is to raise it uh, for some reason based on future you know, uh, not acquisition uh, costs, but uh, uh, but uh, maintenance uh, costs of it, and uh, that will be the argument. But it's really, in my opinion, just I see it as more of trying to uh, muddy the waters and confuse people. So it could has a better chance of failing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Like if we're just going to be playing about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Precisely. Okay. Creating, creating confusion for failure. Okay. Mm. okay. Intentional or intentional? Intentional. Intentional. Okay. okay. We do the tax transfer tomorrow. I don't see the actual ballot language. Am I missing it? I'm trying to find it too. I yeah, but I, I don't see it. As much things as it sounds like it. Yes. Uh, Maybe on their asses, but I know enough to know that's not right. But it says, whereas you're going to enter, enter into IGA, there's IGA language in a council Um I will do it tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering why it's not in there then. Yes, it doesn't appear to be in the municipal code amendment. Yeah, even the municipal code amendment is just saying you're going to enter into an IGA, or as best as I can tell. That you're going to hold it. I think other members of the public call me with questions about it, so I'm just. Which is why I thought it was yeah, yeah, I'd like, I might be missing it, but I don't think I am. Um... Right, there's also bare and then there's section one, and then section two, section three, which is just signatures. And I don't see it. Okay. Anything on any ballot should be understandable by an eighth grader. Well, Tim makes that pretty hard. <laughs> And then we remove the word whereas from the ballot. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 It's not in the IGA, right? Is this something that we want to address now? Make sure we have the, the language in there. Yeah, so okay. yeah. yeah. After, if I can say, I, I'm not going to set up like it, or if it's not in the packet, I don't want to set up the legal. So it's. Okay. It's, okay. Good. And any other questions or comments outside of I think we're going to discuss? I don't think it's uh, an ordinance. I think it's a resolution. The resolution is if it's sent to the leader for the language mm -hmm. and we'll probably come back on the 27th as approval on the resolution or not. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. If you could just yeah. provide clarification at some point tomorrow yeah. before the meeting, that would be awesome. Great. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so then with that, if there's no other questions or comments on that topic, then we can move on to the next old business, which is um, maybe a bit of a change of pace, just talking a little bit about the field trip and debriefing on that. Then I'd like to hear from the board of uh, thoughts on uh, what, what we liked, what we didn't like necessarily, or what we like, maybe another way to put it is what we want to improve for future field trips, and maybe, other, maybe one other thought on uh, just something fun that you learned or something you'd like to share with the rest of the group. So, uh, you would like to chime in? I'll just say one, sorry, I missed it, wish I was there. I think it's blotted from the tune it, so I'm just going to go there. I thought it was great. It was organized and talked to the speakers to catch up describing the projects and it was kind of fun to have each project manager describe the project that they were involved in. Awesome. Any areas of improvement that you'd recommend for future for next year? 
You get to keep the hard hats. Yeah, maybe <laughs> mushroom. Yeah. I mean, also, this had nothing to do with the death trip. My, the one thing that I was pondering now is it feels like these, all three of them, were in pretty, um, like, economically well sort of mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. Just an observation versus, you know. I think some of that might be just because newer developments. Yeah. yeah. But one thing that cracked me up, and this was the, the was the spokes of the two uh, the two art and public places things. The risk management worried about this, and then you have uh, things where kids are flying off uh, 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 jumping with bikes. That's and, okay. Uh, there are elevated sort of bridges with sort of terrain associated with them, and I thought that's your concern. <laughs> I love the art to them. Yeah, I can see it too. I do have photos I want to share, but I think I broke my phone trying to send it to Jeff and he can share it. <laughs> I was super heartened um, by the efforts, especially that just that as I've seen since I got on this board. I've seen a change in how parks are. You know, when I first came, I'm like, could you just stop mowing over here, please? And I, I have seen, I, to me, I'm like, instant gratification. But it's really heartening to see over the three years that that has been a movement to more natural spaces. Um, I've been kind of feeling like um, I've been shouting into the void and that my role has been cued off. But this whole time and like why am I even here? No one no one has listened. But um seeing that, it made me feel like I that um the views I'm representative of representing have been heard and um acted upon and that makes me really, really happy. Thank you all that have been listening. You're welcome, but I, I, I was gonna say the thing that just remember is just like the we want more ball fields, we want more nature areas. I'm meeting with Harold and the fire chief, one of the fire um, chiefs tomorrow because of, we have neighbors right now terrified they're going to burn down the house that's going to not mowing everything. So they want to mow down. No, so, I mean, I, I know that. I know so what you're saying. So yeah, but it's a balance. I appreciate yeah. what you brought. And it is, it's not always, we can't just change that switch quickly. So I appreciate you taking yeah. your time and being patient with because there's, there's still that, that community out there that likes to see things the way it's historically done and mowed and maintained. So yeah. it's, uh, it's always a challenge, but thank you. I was impressed with the uh, at least the growth of the contractor um, communicating about like all the different steps they were taking to mm -hmm. make it more, you know, neighborhood friendly, environmental friendly. Yeah. You know, I thought like, the contractors represented did a good job explaining what they were doing. Really good team. Mm -hmm. It seemed like they had actually talked to their neighbors too. Oh like, yeah. They took the time when neighbors came by and asked them stuff, even though it might have been a lunch hour, to answer it. Anything you'd like to add, Scott? Uh, no, just I, I love it. So, you know, well, if you see it on Google Maps or whatever, when you're like there, you just, then you have a better sense of the scale mm -hmm. of space and what's wrong with the moment. I'm always a big fan of getting out of the field. So. Great. But just like to say, you know, I think it's been said before, but I want to just repeat it because I can't say it enough. Um, thank you so much to the staff for organizing the, the, the trip. Uh, it was really well organized and it showed, obviously, clearly there's a lot of preparation put into it and uh, really came out really nice. And it was, you can see from the from the, uh, the opinions of the board that it really was impactful and, and, and took things away from it. My one area of improvement, which is maybe more uh, administrative, but why do we always end up doing field trips in the summer? Why are, it's so hot outside. <laughs> it was a beautiful day. It was very lucky, weather yeah, yeah, yeah. rise, right. but it just seems like a strange spring decision to do that type of trip. But that's just something for future thought. Fall to me dark. That would be one. And that might be okay. good too. Okay. Yeah. 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 There's all sorts of things. No, that's, uh, there is some merit to that. I, I think yeah. you're on some. 
the sense of how, uh, you know, how much lighting we have and really seeing the effects of it like that, that downward lighting that they talked about, I would have liked to have seen how obtrusive that would be to the neighborhood. I mean, right now, I think we're in one of the best, uh, uh, what's it, uh, uh, dark sky? Dark sky. Uh, what's the, there's a, there's a meteor shower going on right now. There's space plus, plus that hurts first on that, unfortunately. And so, you know, that, that would be, a, you know, interesting because all of a sudden you've got some kid's soccer game going on. How, where are you going to find a dark sky? Oh, uh, you can't find one on that. No, I know, but I'm just saying that that would be beneficial to get that feel. Mm -hmm. So you're, when people complain, you actually have a, a sense of what they're really dealing with. We had a holiday field trip. Happy well, holiday. Yeah, right. That's no. it. Or, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Okay. That. Okay, great. A any other last thoughts on this before we move on? Okay. Let's move on to discussing items from the packet updates. Does anybody have any they'd like to raise about the packet? I just wondered if there's anything more you could say about the, I know you said you have to talk about it, but the recreation, um, I was excited to, to see that and talk about it. So, then, yeah, if there's like, will you be able to bring that back soon? I, I would hope we could do that in September. Can I ask a question? I don't have it in front of me, but I thought it might be nice to see some figures if they did not show. Some math that I figured staff has already looked at in terms of what like the actual cost reduction or removing some of the facilities out of cost recovery would look like. Have you done any That's annual actually, estimates? Or? That part of it, not very much Jeff is talking about, um, it's in the finances hands to, to do those estimations. Okay. So I was kind of curious, are you going to write what the financial difference essentially was between the current? I, I gave them a bucket of numbers. Okay. They're running simulations would be the word I would use. Yep. But it, it's also layered with the budget that's yep. happening right now that yep. is obviously a giant priority. Yeah, absolutely. Just curious when you have anything. And by if they if you take it and come back in September, like is there a time frame that you need to get this approved in order for it to be meaningful? Well it it would be discussed during the budget process with council. Um, but that, the, the timing of that uh, will work if, if it can move forward. Any other items in the pocket? I have a number of small things. Great. Uh, I heard something about the website progress progressing and that. We had been asked to not update any pages on the current website because notes is coming. Yes. Is that like it's here in two weeks or like the yes. night anywhere? At 19. Yeah, it's supposed to be okay. 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 I saw, saw the uh, like utility billing site's going to change yeah. and the email lists are all changing. Yeah, I did get an email. Very excited. Email. So that's great. Um, I also question about there's a note about Centennial and like materials arriving for resurfacing the pool. Mm -hmm. I maybe we discussed this a few months ago, but after the great YMCA swap failed, my impression was that Centennial was kind of crumbling in the ground and couldn't be retained. And that's why we're doing what we're trying to do. So we're trying to do the best we can to limit the cost. Effort. Okay. And slowing that process. How long does that give us the resurfacing? I can't tell you. I can tell you that it's resurfacing that is warranted for 10 years. This is something we went to at the, at the rec center in the, yeah. in the main pool. Um, we're really happy with it after you know, six months a year. As far as something going into the future and being a little more durable than diamond right, which has been used for many years a lot of facilities. So this is our, our best shot at holding the leaking of at least the tank itself. Um, that doesn't account for the stuff that's around and underneath the tank. So there's no way for us to, sure. to address that. But this is something we feel like we can do. Um, we have the funds within within our PRO 102 budget to be able to do this. That's great. And so we're getting there. It's very smelly and dusty. The process or the facility? <laughs> Both <Yes>. right now. <laughs> and the people oh, working on it too. <laughs> oh, I went in on our plug in on Saturday. I was riding my bike by and I was, you know, I was about to plug my head. I was like, oh, it's, 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 it's really 
Yeah. Okay, thanks. That's great. Um, a question on the resilient Saint Brain projects. In the updates about Boston Ave and Isaac Walton's uh, reach, there's a bit of a conflict in saying whether the trail's going to open from Price to Boston when the bridge is done. The Isaac Walton part says it's not going to open until that's done. Boston Bridge says it is. Which there's a meeting it? next week with Jim Aspen and his justification team. They're going to talk through what that potential detour might look like. I noticed also that there just isn't an update on that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and then my last question was, there was a discussion about the, I think Sir David, oh, sorry, there was a discussion about um, ag leases being extended, and then there was a discussion about, I think, the city approving purchase of pivot irrigation or something like that. So how does that work? Does the city buy the pivot? Does the lessee buy it? I mean, we're, what we're trying to do is try to make it equitable to be on the land, and you know, when you lease it, it's kind of challenging to make capital investments. So we kind of share that cost. So what we do is we work with NRCS, which has grant programs to bring it in, so it brings the cost down. One of the things that NRCS likes to see is that they'll get a payback on that investment. So we usually lengthen the lease so that they know that that tenant's going to be able to use that, that irrigation system for a certain amount of time to get the payback on that. The city then typically go through, you know, if we need to bring power to the site, we'll bring that power. We'll put, um, we'll work with the dish companies because to do a, a center pivot versus flood irrigation, you know, Putting pipes in off the, the ditch to flood irrigate, you need to put a pond in so with a pump, you can pump out of so we'll put the pond in, we'll bring electric in, we'll bring that infrastructure in, and then the tenant purchases the center pivot. That way, if they leave, they can take their center pivot with them. It is theirs, they've got their contract with NRCS, they can continue that. So it's a cost share on um, basically the infrastructure that we put in. Then the next time it shows up, if they like to get an NRCS grant, they can do that, and the infrastructure is already there. That's super cool, right? Is that something that the county does, or other cities do? I haven't heard that. Yeah, I think I've had that. I was at Culture Spanish at the county. Some of the things that we get to do in the year for quite a while. And also, yeah. what a cool program! That's awesome. I didn't know about it. That's all I have. Any other questions from the packet? I just had one for myself, um, which was uh, with Bryce's update on the Ranger program. He says here that. Rangers are resuming monitoring for cyanobacteria at Union Reservoir and Lake McIntosh. So that caught me by surprise because I was under, my understanding was that we did not test the water at Lake McIntosh. So, so there's two pieces there. Okay. There's, a, there's a test for the beach quality. We're actually doing a test. Monitoring for the cyanobacter is basically we're looking for the blue algae, algae uh, blooms. So if they see that at Macintosh, then we can call and we can specifically test it. There's no regular test at Macintosh for that. At Union, we're doing tests for E. coli at the beach, and then we're watching for the blue green algae, then we'll test for it there as well. So I just feel like it is different as wording. So we're okay. always kind of monitoring for it. When Rangers, they, they get trained, so when they're out of patrol, because at Macintosh, our big concern in a lot of those areas, I mean, human body contact is one, but we also are looking for any of the Lot of bodies around just because dogs. Yeah. And people just want right. a dog walk down to the water and get a drink. If we see the blue green algae, we want to try to make sure that people know um, that it's there and it's a risk for their pets as much as I would. Okay, got it. So it's not like. There's, there's not a new level of testing at McIntosh. It's basically on patrol, they're looking for it, and we'll see it. We will then go ahead and do testing if we, if we see it. Oh, that's helpful. Thank you. If there's the blue algae, can people still fish? So there's questions about that. We have not stopped it at this point. I think some some lakes have in the past, but we have not. Does it make the fish icky to eat? I don't actually know, but I think it really is them having to handle it. If they're pulling up through the, the mats of that and stuff, it's really handling the fish and stuff more than anything. Right? As far as the fish, I don't think it does anything to the fish itself, but I would, I would check with Scott or someone on that. Can I ask, is the blue green algae an issue of union because of agricultural or not? Nearby, what's really the problem? Um, heat, weather, turnover of the water, um, not having enough fresh water coming in. Sometimes we fresh water coming in and turning things over, but it's, it's a problem on the front range. I mean, that's one thing with our, our rangers having worked in different reservoirs. Almost all, you know, if it's Aurora or Cherry Creek, they have to shut down because of the algae, so it's nothing unique to, to us. But we haven't had any reports yet this year, right? Not of anything. We've, we've 
seen it, but not in new areas that are um, in the swim area or been a, of a concern as a large thing that we need to do, to do testing. So. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, so then we'll move on from that. We'll move to the items from the staff. Any items from the staff that you raise? Okay. Uh, items from the board that are not related to the packet. Anna, please. I just wanted to say that I did freak you out uh, unnecessarily. I was just looking at the wrong item on the council agenda. So you will see the ordinance language under item B. Oh, thank you. I thought so, you were texting Danielle as well. Okay. Like, oh, Sorry, I was like, you know, like that seems like a real oversight. So because, because the one. IGA, yeah, there's a yeah, because the there. yeah, there's the other item. So there's B, which is about the rest of the ordinance, and then F is a resolution to enter oh, into IGA right. over the ordinance. The ordinance language is there. I'm so sorry. The ordinance, the ordinance and there should be ballot language. And that's ballot language actually, if you read the ordinance, the ballot language is then in the ordinance. It's in all caps. So as you yeah. as you scroll through, you, you should see two places. Ballot language, ordinance, and then ballot language again in, in, in the ordinance. Yes. So, sorry. Full packets on page 146. But I'll say page 6 of the ordinance. Sorry about that unnecessary. No, it's great. You know that feeling when you're like, oh no. I just said it. So, Danielle, I'm sorry. I think you're right now. That was my sorry. Great. Don't be so. Great. Any other items from the board? So. Uh, yeah, so um, when South Grass Park Parkway was uh, repaved, um, post bridge, the lanes were changed. Trees were taken out on those islands, and then they were never put back. Ironically, I have two school district people constantly asking me when those trees are going to go back in. Um, the specific trees are long gone, I don't know that. But, um, but there used to be like, probably three trees per yeah, I don't mind now it's just... So I don't know, Stephanie, have you heard about this at all? It's one of those pieces, uh, again, I think Stephanie and Timber work very well uh, doing, we're designing something, we're bringing operations in to make sure that we're working on it so it's going to work for you. When we did that work over there, a work group, not coordinating with another work group, so there's no irrigation to that point. So those trees, unless they're plastic, are not going to do that. Okay, any other items from the board? If not, we can move to adjourn. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Is there a motion to adjourn? Is there a second? Scott seconds. All those in favor? All right. All right, we have that unanimously. Adjourn.